Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, a Computer Vision Consultant, Developer and Course Instructor. I build Computer Vision solutions to help companies improve their process efficiency, reliability, and scalability. Today, we will be building from scratch a fun project to track how long we are in front of a computer or a monitor. And the idea of this project was born from some researchers that I've been reading about how the eyes are affected when we are a lot of hours in front of the computer. Uh, specifically, there is what is called uh, computer vision syndrome or digital eye strain. And it's, it's proved that after uh, certain hours, like the uh, eyes are affected by the screen and this should be, of course, common knowledge. And I will not get into the details of the research because that's not my field, but I want to build this fun project where we can track with the camera automatically how, uh, how long we are in front of the computer. So the camera keeps checking if there is someone while we are doing our work or watching some videos or doing anything. And after a certain time, we get an alert telling us uh, you have been in front of the computer for that time. Uh, there are already apps that do this. I uh, use some of them uh, that do this not without checking like if there is a face in front of the computer, but they do this just checking if we are using the keyboard, the mouse, and so on. Today, we will do something more advanced, checking even if uh, there is the face. This is a fun project, so uh, it's, we'll do everything from scratch. So even if you are a complete beginner in Python, you can follow this because everything will be done uh, from scratch. Or let's now get right away into building this code. So I'm going to create a Python code. This is a Python file that uh, we'll write from scratch. I'm going to use two libraries, MediaPipe and uh, OpenCV Python. To install, this, to install these libraries, you can use the command prompt, uh, pip install OpenCV-Python to install OpenCV, pip install MediaPipe to install the MediaPipe library. If you have problem with Python installation of library, there is a lot of material online to understand how to install Python, like how to use, I'm using PyCharm for the, for the idle. There are a lot of like uh, editor where you can type your code. So we will skip all these steps. Let's now get right away into the code. Uh, first of all, we want to uh, use OpenCV to extract the frames from the camera in real time before performing our detection. So let's import CV2, which is the OpenCV library. Now, what do we have to do? We have to take frames in real time from the camera. So for this, we get a capture object. So let me put some comment, take frame from camera, uh, capture object, cap equals CV2.video capture zero. So this is a capture object, zero is uh, the index of the camera. Zero means let's take the first webcam. If you have more cameras, if you put one, it will load the second to the third and so on. Now let's test this quickly. So we want to make sure that this is working. Red underscore frame equals cap dot read. This is, so once we choose the camera with this cap, we want to take a frame from the camera. So this is taking a picture from the camera. So take frame from camera. Red is telling is false. We are not getting any frame. It can be if the camera is disconnected, uh, if it cannot the camera, if the camera is already, already occupied, like so many reasons. It's true or false. Frame, if we are able to get the frame, it's the frame that we can display. So let's now display this. CV2.im show the window, we can call the window as we wish. Let's say frame. And then what do we want to display? We want to display this frame. Now we want, okay, let me put a comment, display frame. Uh, well, after we display the frame, we need a wait key event. Key equals cv2.wait key zero. This is, the concept is very simple. When we execute the Python code, is executing line by line. After we show the frame, the code finishes. So it shows the frame and the code closes itself. So let me run this quickly so that it's 
more clear. So we are, you see like there was a frame for a moment and it closes. So we need a wait key event that keeps everything open on hold until we press a key. That's why very simple, it's called wait key. Wait key zero, it's freezing the frame. So let's now run this one. Uh, I'm using, uh, this is like the, the webcam directly from my, my laptop. So we are taking the frame. That's it, like very basic. We are taking the frame, nothing else. Now, consider that we want this to be in real time, we need to take the frame in a loop. So we, we took a picture, we don't want a picture, we want this in real time. So what do we do? We take the frames in a loop, while true, and we put everything inside a loop. So if I run this again, now it's showing what frame, because it's freezing on the line 12 cv 2waitkey 0 If I press a key, it's taking another frame. If I press a key, it's taking another frame. So each time I press a key, so you see I press a key, it takes a new frame. We want this in real time. I don't want to press a key each time. So I will say wait key 1. So wait key 0 is freezing a frame. Wait key 1 is waiting 1 millisecond and going to the next. So it's not freezing anymore. And that's how with OpenCV very quickly and easily we get the frame in real time. So this is directly from Python. We're getting the frame in real time uh, directly from the Python code. And now with this that we have right here, we can do whatever we want. We can draw something on the screen. We can uh, perform detection. Uh, we can do any image filtering operation. We can do anything we want. Now let's stick with our project. What we, uh, we want to do with our project is to detect the face. If there is the face in front of the screen, then we can count the time. So that we can count how long we're in front of the screen. If there is no face, uh, no, no face, we don't do anything. Or we will see later if we want to reset the timing and so on. Now we will use phase detection. So this basic phase detection, it's, there are different libraries that can perform phase detection. Um, it's phase detection, it means that not that it's uh, facial recognition telling who you are and so on. Phase detection will be simply surrounding the face with a bounding box or even more basic telling if there is a face or not a face. We have the lib library, for example, for Python or a uh, newer one is MediaPipe, which is very fast, very good. So we'll use MediaPipe, import MediaPipe as MP. This is the library that will perform face detection. So let's load face detector, face detection equals mp.solutions, solutions dot face detection dot Phase detection. Well, this is like so quickly, so easy. With this one, you we can detect if there are faces on the screen or not. Very, very easy. Where do we detect and how we detect if there are faces? Even this is simple. We are taking a frame. So keep in mind that when we work from cameras or with videos. With computer vision, we are working with single images one after the other. This makes the concept very simple because we check the image, is there anything, I mean, we process the image and then we go to the next image because a video is nothing more than frame after frame. Usually we have 30 frames in a, in a second or 60 frames or more if you have very advanced uh, camera. So let's now, Usually webcams have like 30 frames or 60 frames, like not more than that. Uh, let's right here perform face detection. So face detection will be result dot pro, uh, results equals face detection dot process. And we want to analyze the frame. Okay, one very uh, short technical thing, if OpenCV uses the BGR, uh, BGR color format, so blue, green, and red, while standard anywhere we see RGB, so um, red, green, and blue. 
So before processing the image with MediaPipe, which wants to uh, want the frame in BGR format, we need to convert the format. Um, RGB frame equals CV2.CVT color. We want to convert frame and then CV2.color underscore BGR to RGB. So this is the function to convert the BGR format to RGB format so that we can process this one with media pipe. Now the results is going to give us faces. If there are faces, otherwise it's going to give us none. So let's now print results so that we have an idea of what we are getting from this. So let me go, let me take out the face. Okay, um, it's my mistake. I need to, uh, we need a results uh, is an object which contains inside the information. So we need to enter inside the results to get that. Uh, so we need to accept results.detection. And let's now print this one. The detections, results.detections, plural. Let's print this one. And we see a lot of output right here. Let's now go out. So you see, if I move my face outside, we see none. If my face is inside, uh, we see the output. Let's analyze quickly this. The output that we see right here is the position of our face on the screen, uh, where we have the X position, the Y position, so the top left point, right here and then we have the width of our face and the height of our face so that we can draw around that a rectangle we could draw a rectangle now i will not do that we don't really need to draw the rectangle for this purpose even though later we might do that let's see if the tutorial doesn't take too long what we want to know if there is face or if there is no face like that's what we want to know so uh is the face on is the face uh, detected? If if results dot detection, then print face on the screen. Or uh, like face, let's say looking at the screen. Else. Face, looking at the screen else print no face so the idea is that we check always in real time if the face is looking at the screen we do something if the face is not looking at the screen it means that we took a break so ideally our eyes are not looking at the screen but they're looking somewhere else so let's run this one just to make sure that everything is working correctly Uh, detection again so if results dot detections so this is plural results dot detections okay face looking at the screen let me cover this one no face face looking at the screen of course i'm cheating right now because i'm covering this so face looking at the screen no face we have like the major part of our app already built because this the computer vision task it's understanding if we are in front of the computer or if we are not in front uh, of the computer also i can i'm not able to close this if i press any key so let's also add a key event because uh, we are showing the frames in real time but we are not able to if we press a key nothing happens so let's add some event if key equals to 27 27 is the ask on key on the keyboard we want to quit also let's complete this once we quit cap dot release this simply saying uh, let's re release the camera so if you need to use the the camera with other software like zoom um, skype or any other things the camera is not occupied by the python code so cap dot release is for that reason cv2 dot destroy all windows to close like any uh, open cv windows that might be open 
So results dot detection face looking at the screen no face. Let's now add what it's uh, our goal the time tracker. So track track time. How can we track the tra uh, track the time? We need to we need to understand when we are starting. So starting time. And then we, we will check elapsed time um, at each moment. So let's do that. For starting time, we have a time library in Python. So import time. Uh, time dot time. So this is the starting time. And we can check the elapsed time that we are in front of the screen. So let's say face. Uh, we are in. Um, let me think. We have the starting time, we need to check the elapsed time. So um, elapsed time equals starting time minus, oh sorry, uh, the time now, so time dot time minus starting time. And we can print elapsed uh, let's uh, let's show elapsed time dot uh, format elapsed time and let's run this one. So we see elapsed time two seconds three right here. Oh, the, uh, right here we see. 6.0921 and so on. these are seconds we have like the uh, like we have a huge approximation that we absolutely don't need we can just stick with the seconds will be more than enough so we can say we can want we want an integer of this so we have a long float number let's use only one two three not 1.074 and so on there is a typo here cv2 dot destroy all windows Okay, so we have now the elapsed time. Uh, I want to make this graphically uh, just a little bit mm, more nice. So let's put, uh, I, I want to, to have a screen where we can see this. So let's, mm, let's do it this way. So I want to show the elapsed time in real time on the screen instead of printing it uh, with Python. Well, let's now display the elapsed time on the screen. So right here, uh, after lapse time, we can see CV2. So uh, draw a lapse time on screen. Uh, CV2 dot put text. This is the OpenCV function to draw the text. Where do we want to draw the text on the frame? What do we want to display on the text? We want to display uh, let's display just the counter of the time. Uh, so this is a dot format elapsed time. So this one, let's say seconds. And then uh, where do we want to display the text? We need to give an X and Y coordinate. Let's display this at the top left. So let's say it starts from zero, zero, and for the Y, so for the X, we need to go like this, for the Y, we go down. So we go to the right and we go down. So let's say 10 pixels to the right and then 50 pixels down. Now, all, uh, what font do we want? CV2.font, Hair shape plane. Uh, we have a few fonts on OpenCV. Uh, to be honest, I don't like any of them. <laughs> there, there are no fancy fonts. So let's just use some. I'm, I'm taking just a random font that I know of. The size of the text, let's say two, or let's say three. Let's make it very big. Three, the color. Let's make it yellow, for example. So to make a color, we need to give like three values, B, G, R, blue, green, and red. From zero, where is the absence of the color? 
255 that is the maximum of that color let's say 15 of blue 225 of green 215 of red thickness of the text let's say two pixels let's now run this one i want to make sure that everything is working correctly uh, it's not font hair shape plane so there is a typo on the font line 28 font hair shape plane uh, one second two seconds so we have the timer in real time that it's running right here timer so the timer is working we can make this look more nice what we could do for example is i, I could put a square below the, the text so that it's more visible so I, I will quickly do this change so let's also draw a square so uh, draw or a rectangle draw a rectangle see to that rectangle uh, i will make this uh, let's put the rectangle on the frame to draw a rectangle we need two points top left zero zero two let's cover all the width of the image so let's take the width of the image um, height width uh, channels equals e, uh, frame dot shape so this is how we get the information from the image so from the width to let's say around 70 pixels so we'll put this just a bit below the text so from from 00 to the full width and 70 pixels down the color of this rectangle let's say full black or it could be gray yeah, let's say com almost completely black let's say 10 10 10 minus one to make to fill the rectangle with the color let's draw this i mean let's run this and see if everything is working correctly it's working correctly that's exactly what i wanted now it's the key of our program let's say that we want an alert when we reach one hour um, so we should understand and check in real time when we reach this hour so it will be if elapsed time time is greater than uh, how long is one hour so if the elapsed time is greater than 3600 seconds then in this case we could display an alert uh, reach it maximum time um, show alert Uh, now for testing purposes 3600 seconds is too much let's say maybe 15 seconds so that we can test list this one so if elapsed time is greater than uh, 15 we what can be the alert so i i thought about two types of the alert the first one could be uh, let's surround all the um, all the image with a uh, red bounding box so this would be an alert so we can draw a red rectangle cv2 dot rectangle rectangle so let me copy this so we draw the rectangle from 0 0 to the end of the image from uh, height and instead of minus one which will fill this with the color let's say let's say for example 10 and let's make this red so zero of blue zero of green 255 of red we're doing a rectangle that is surrounding exactly the entire frame we're doing that with red color let's say 225 it's more nice i don't like the full red 225 and 10 pixels is the the thickness of the border So let's now test this one. So we're, uh, I'm well going to wait for uh, that this reaches 15. At 50 seconds, we should see a red rectangle uh, surrounding right here. So uh, 15, 16. Okay, that's the alert that I wanted. Now, 
this is not enough as an alert because let's say that you are using the computer you are doing something else you could put an audio alert which or oh, it will just you're doing something else there will be an audio i don't want to do that i want to be something more fun let's say that the window will pop up and you will not able to put it down so that's the alert that i like so we can put this property let me do that uh, with opencv uh, cv2.set window property uh, let me double check to make sure that this function is correct so set windows property window property uh, i want to put this one where on the frame so i want to set which window frame so i want to ch put change the property on this one and i want to put this window on top all the time uh, cv2 dot wnd prop top most underscore uh, uh, comma one so the idea is that whatever we are doing the program is open running in the background when it reaches like the the threshold time of 50 seconds the window is going to pop up in front of us and i'm going to test now this one so i'm running this current file uh, let's let's suppose that we are doing uh we are working we're doing our project so this is me doing something else it can be any or oh, any program could be opened let's say i'm opening the calculator and now you see this window pops up in front and it doesn't matter what i do this window will not go down so this is an alert and it's good because it's disturbing so it's forcing you somehow to stop the working now it should probably close yeah it closes but uh, if you want to be even more mean we we could do that it will not close even if you press like the x but oh, we will not do that now but it's possible like to to just keep it on um all the time so uh to this one at this moment i will just add one thing i mean a couple of things let's do this so the track time let's say that here we have the the settings of our program let's say uh settings settings uh, maximum time maximum time equal let's say 15 seconds mm. so that we can change the value right at the beginning of the code now what else can we make to improve this program this is not enough right now because we want also the program to understand when we are not looking at the screen otherwise there is no point if it's just checking and adding this all the time so if i move so let's say that this program is running uh we leave it doesn't show this but when we come back it's still showing the same time ideally when we leave the computer when we go somewhere and come back uh, we should see a reset, reset of the counter So I will make this now very simple because this is only an exercise. So if so if there is no phase, we can reset. So if okay, let's keep the printing no phase. Let's reset the counter. If there is no phase, we can reset the counter by resetting the starting time. As simple as that. So when we leave, the counter will be uh, will, will will be initialized again and will start from scratch. And this is of course very basic. This is an exercise. It's not the idea that if you leave for one second, you you will restart the counter. You could put a function, for example, uh, that will check if you are a minimum of let's say ten minutes away, we will restart the counter. Otherwise, it will not restart the counter. So it can. Like if you do this program properly there are many things that you need to take into consideration it's not just an if statement if you are far reset no so now let's just check that this is working so i leave 
I come back and it starts from zero seconds. This is a very, very basic program that we just created. All the code that it's here, uh, it's available to download down below for free. So I recommend that you follow everything from scratch and then you type this from scratch because that's how you learn the most. But you can also check the blog post. You will see uh, the written article about this video. Plus you can uh, download the code. As I said, this was only a fun project just uh, just for, for you to play around with computer vision to see how and what is possible to do with computer vision. If you want to know more about this and if you're interested into getting more involved and learning about detecting objects, more advanced stuff for computer vision, I have a blueprint. It's a crash course that you can check. It's one hour where I teach you, uh, like I show you like the main path to learn computer vision to detect and track any object to use that on a more, um, let's say, on a more professional level and industrial environment. If uh, you are interested in other solutions, you need solutions for companies, we can help you do that. Uh, we offer consulting services and we develop software on demand. Uh, I will be releasing soon new videos about new fun projects and also industrial projects. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment below. This is all for this video and see you in the next one.